Hello everyone, welcome back to A Message of Hope. My name is Monet Souza, and today I'm joined with a good friend, Christina Valenzuela, the founder of Pearl and & Thistle, and her daughter is actually also in the studio today, Anna. We are going to be talking about what menstrual cycles have to do with hope. But before we jump into that topic, will you please open us up in prayer? Yeah, let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fires of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here and we ask that you guide our conversation. Bless the hearts of all who hear and guide us all to seek your holy will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Christina, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is a long time coming. I am very excited to finally sit down with you and yeah. share your knowledge with all of our viewers who will be watching this episode when it airs. So thank you just for the work that you're, you're doing with Pearl and Thistle. And can you just give us a little insight of who you are, what you do, and a little bit of your background. Yeah, so Pearl and Thistle is kind of, it's my business where I offer lifelong body literacy for Catholics of all ages and mm -hmm. stages. And what that means is I started out over 10 years ago as a natural family planning instructor. Okay. And I started working with couples and time and time again, I would just hear this refrain over and over from the women and from the men, like, why didn't anybody tell, this, tell us this mm -hmm. about our bodies sooner? Like, where right. was this information when we were growing up, right? Mm -hmm. And why are we learning it now when it's kind of stressful right before a marriage, right? So sure. all of these sorts of emotions and then practical considerations coming in. And so I started thinking about, well, how could we do this better, right? As a church, how could we create a model of education that would eventually lead to people being really comfortable with the knowledge mm -hmm. that will help them utilize natural family planning, if that's what they're called to do, sure. right? Um, but just building a foundation of respect and understanding for the way that our body works mm. in a specific area, I think, where society is also kind of letting us down in the education. Maybe we could talk about that sure. as a separate thing. But so Pearl and Thistle is a model where I do period and menstrual cycle education for girls mm -hmm. starting before they get their first period. I teach basic charting, not for fertility, but for health, for mm -hmm. teenagers and for single women, and then move on to natural family planning. And then I have parish support programs for people who like want to bring this model of education to their local communities. So That's kind great. of the whole gamut there. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, even to just hear the work that you have been doing and even what you're putting out on social media for mm. useful tools and tips for moms, for girls, for even what it can translate to for the work space, because mm, something that you had yeah. mentioned, because I've had um, many jobs and it didn't hit me until you had posted a video actually of uh, our work spaces should be conducive for a woman who does get her periods in the workplace. And so right. I eventually brought it to my superiors. I was like, we should start carrying feminine hygiene products in the bathrooms. And they're like, we never even thought of that. Right. <laughs> and so it's just, even yeah. for how it's translating to my own life, to the settings that I'm in, the, the ways that you are enlightening, even for like a woman, I'm mm. not even thinking these things. And maybe that's because right. society never prompted me to think that way. So right. thank you for yeah, just changing how I am living and then allowing that to translate to others that I work with. But for today's topic, yeah. I am very intrigued, everyone. I have no <laughs> sense of where Christina is going to take us. But you're somehow going to show the connection between menstrual cycles and hope. Mm -hmm. I have a few notes jotted down, but yeah. I want to first hear, yeah, what what is that thought process and how does it connect? Yeah, so um, when you asked me, you know, like what kind of what's a basic question we can start with? I was like, well, let's start with hope, right? Because that's what the show is all about. Where's hope? Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually, so I threw out that question and then I was like, well, what am I going to say? And I started thinking and I was like, oh, that could be, that could be big. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with two points okay. and then maybe we'll see where it goes from there. So Great. my first point is kind of an, an earthly point, And then the second one is going to be more heavenly. Okay? okay. So we'll start with the natural and then the supernatural. So the first one, hope, I want to think about the hemorrhaging woman in the Gospels. Mm. Are you familiar with that story, yes. right? So for any of your viewers, let's tell that story really quickly, right? Okay. So there's a woman who's been bleeding for 12 
years. She obviously has an issue. She's got some hemorrhages going on, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that ritually she's unclean, right? Mm -hmm. It means that she's not allowed to even touch her husband mm -hmm. for 12 years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so do you, you want to help me tell the story? So Jesus comes, yes. right? And she's in the crowd. And then what happens? And then she just with great prof profound hope, and mm -hmm. faith knows that even if she touches the cloak, even just a string mm -hmm. from his cloak, that she will be healed. And that's that's mm -hmm. what she does, like through that act of faith, reaches out in the mm -hmm. crowd, just touches him, and then? Right, and then <laughs> her flow of blood is dried up, mm -hmm. right? But what I love is that Jesus' reaction, he's like, who touched me, right? Yes. You can just imagine that human interaction, but Jesus knows. Jesus exactly. knows exactly who touched him, mm -hmm. right? But it's, it's almost this sort of thing that he's setting up so that he can have this conversation with her in front of everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. So this woman who could not even touch her husband for 12 years dares to touch the mm -hmm. incarnate God, yeah. right? I mean, I get chills thinking about that, but mm -hmm. what an act of hope mm -hmm. and trust, exactly. right? That she would be healed, that Christ, she, she knew that Christ wants us to be healed mm -hmm. in our physical bodies, right? Yeah. Um, so obviously in his mission, he's talking about healing us from sins, mm -hmm. but he does not neglect the body, That's right? True. And so she knew that. And so I think one of the things when it comes to menstrual cycles, I think especially for women, this is an area where we, we suffer a lot physically like yeah. we can there's a lot of issues that we can have with cramps with heavy bleeding with like all sorts of mood disorders that are associated with our cycles mm -hmm. um and sometimes like that woman we've spent all our money and we've seen all the doctors and they do nothing yep right it's very easy to give up hope and it's very easy to think like maybe jesus doesn't actually want to heal this part of me mm. Like maybe this is actually just a broken part of my humanity and it's not worthy of healing. Yeah. And so I want to make sure that the church says, no, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. all of you is worthy of healing and you That's cannot true. let go of that hope, yes. right? Of that physical healing that your divine physician wants to bring you, even when your earthly doctors can't, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that. Yeah. And I think that related to that is the heavenly hope of the resurrection, mm -hmm. that um, it's very easy to think of ourselves as just like, like our real personhood is our spirit, right? And our body is kind of inconsequential, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not what we profess in the creed, right? We say exactly. that we're gonna be resurrected with Jesus yes. and that our bodies are gonna be present in that. Mm -hmm. And I think in today's day and age, when we have some weird societal understandings of like what the body is and how the body is integral to the human person, um, absolutely the church needs to say like no embodied life is life, yeah. right? It's not just your earthly life and your heavenly life is a spiritual life. Like no life, human life is inherently embodied. Mm -hmm. And so with our menstrual cycles, you know, um, we think about things that women's bodies do, right? We yeah. have menstrual cycles and mm -hmm. it's a part of being an embodied woman, exactly, right? Which is also a meaningful distinction mm -hmm. in the resurrection. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my thought is also that we need to make sure that, you know, some women will get pregnant. Some women will um, be able to like breastfeed a baby, right? But not all women will do that. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of women will have a menstrual cycle. And so I'm like, well here, this is just like a basic biological function that women's bodies do that we need yeah. to be comfortable with um, in the sense that we accept it. Right, and even our, how God made us. And are comfortable like talking about it as well. So many years there have been, because everyone even my, to my family knows this, where when it's that time of the month, I get very vocal, like my entire, like, like I, I have no filter, like filter goes out the window the minute my cycle starts and I get very vocal about what's going on. Yeah. I'm talking about um, pads and tampons and it's just like, it, it's, I'm putting everything out there. And ever since I started having my periods, I had so many people say, wow, it's amazing that you're so comfortable talking about this. And I'm hearing that from other women. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm, this is what's happening. And we can't pretend that it's not. And even right. for the men in the room, 
they probably have some woman in their life, a sister, a wife, a mom, they know that this is what happens, but yeah, to even just tuck it, uh, tuck it away. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's, you know, to go back to the hemorrhaging woman too, of this, the shame that even, you know, yeah. watching the chosen granted, they do have a little bit I of their seen that episode you and everybody yet? keeps telling me you, like, you need to, to see it. You like, do, okay. you do. And right. granted, yeah. who knows if there was creative liberty that was there and if some of the apostles really did react at the degree that they did. But when they had just rushed over and they go, Why would you touch like our Lord? Like you can't mm-hmm. touch him, Lord, she's unclean. And there was mm-hmm. this like worry of, okay, everyone stay away. You know, sh- sh- we now need to get him cleaned and go through the process of just like ridding himself of the person who is unclean touching our Lord. And mm-hmm. I think that's sometimes what's projected onto us of, there's like even jokes that I hear of, oh, um, you know, someone in the Catholic church like is aware that someone's on their period and they'll say as a joke, unclean, unclean. Like that's happened to me before Mm -hmm. and I can brush it off, but at the same time, when can we begin to separate? Like, no, this is innate of what happens to a woman. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is a trickle effect down to the sin of Eve in the garden. Like we're gonna have to go through some of this pain. Like you're saying, like Mm -hmm. it's, we go through a lot of pain as women Um, but how do we even begin to, yeah, I guess like even maybe start with owning it and being like, this is not weird that this is happening and this is not bad that this is happening and receiving my period. But then also I can, I should and can talk about this in the right settings. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's so loaded because, well, so I should also like put in a little plug in. So I have a book coming out next year with OSV and it's Mm -hmm. called, the language of your body, mm-hmm. embracing God's design for your cycles. And mm-hmm. so I, I talk about a lot of these things in the mm-hmm. book and there's no way that I can like distill it. But I mean, I think that there's in the church especially, okay, we have inherited um, some views about women and about menstruation that I, I, to be as charitable as I possibly can, like are just rooted in like bad science. like. It's important that we listen to the voices of tradition, to to the people who have come before us. Like Mm -hmm. we can't just like cast them off and be like, well, they didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, but they were working with different different science than what we know these days, which is why I also think it's really important to embark on these conversations because we have a lot of new information from science, which Mm -hmm. tells us about the important vital function of cycles in women's bodies. So like, that's another thing. Yeah. Um, but it's also, I mean, the, the tradition is also a very mixed bag, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Gregory and, and Thomas um, were very clear when they spoke, Gregory the Great, about um, women should absolutely be welcome to receive communion when they're menstruating, right? Mm-hmm. And there were other voices in tradition which said otherwise. Yeah. And so I think that sometimes we pick and choose and we hear which voices seem the most challenging to us or we don't necessarily understand that there there have been people articulating very positive things along the way um and we do need to kind of go back and dig those things back up for ourselves and see like this isn't some like random new 21st century thing we're inventing here by saying that like cycles are a good part of women's bodies it's something that we've been talking about as a church Mm -hmm. it's just that now we have a different language to do that with that makes sense um so I want to, you know, I think it's important to keep those combos going. Yes. And even for, you know, I do know I have a lot of um, young people who are watching, especially young women, but to, to give them, like going back to hope, to give them that hope because mm-hmm. even, all right, I, I know what Go hope is, but I'm going to just, I'm just going to read it so we can make sure that we know there's a distinction of hope is not uh, like a birthday wish, like you're blowing out candles, like, right. oh, I'm making a happy little wish. It's like, no, this is something so much deeper, the theological virtue. Yes. So Catechism, paragraph 1817 says, it is the theological virtue by which desires, um, by which we desire the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. and eternal life as our happiness. So it's letting us know that it's through faith that we are going to be able to continue to journey to our eternal resting place, which is heaven, but it's hope that's letting us know this is like really difficult right now. Like whether Mm -hmm. the relationship, the vocation, the job, the menstrual cycle, whatever it may be, this is really hard right now, but I have so much hope that there's going to be eternal happiness in heaven someday. And I'm going to continue to walk to get there through the struggles. But for the, the women who are just like throwing their hands up in the air or, 
getting so frustrated with OBGYN or the primary care doctor or mm -hmm. whatever it may be, or even, um, yeah, just the generational biological uh, passing down of, oh, my mom and my grandmother and my great grandmother have always had really like heavy periods or really painful periods. Yeah. Where do women begin to dig deep into that hope to reach out and touch the garment of our Lord, which could translate to calling out to him, getting the adoration, um, asking for the Lord to provide healing. Where can we dig deep if it's already been cast so deep into a shadow? Mm, well, I mean, the approach has to be sometimes interior movements, which change us to actually think that like this is worth pursuing, mm -hmm. right? If, if we don't really actually truly believe that we deserve healing in, in some place or we're not we're not convinced that this is worth it like we'll give up mm -hmm. right we'll, we'll hit an, an obstacle and we'll be like yeah. okay well that's it right mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you really have to to develop that fortitude and to keep pushing yeah when your doctors may be turning you down right um, but one thing that I have encountered and I and I think it's just a flipping the internal script I was speaking with one woman one time. Um, she had previewed my cycle prep program, which is my, my period course, my first period course for girls. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, I just, I just think that the tone is wrong because you talk about the goodness of period blood and you talk about this as a healthy function. And she's like, you're not being realistic enough about how much pain and suffering are just inherently involved in periods. Mm. And I think girls need to just be told that so that they can just be prepared to suck it up and deal with it when they get their periods, right? Mm. This was a woman who yeah. had experienced painful periods, her whole family. Mm -hmm. So her worldview was like, periods are just about like sucking up the pain. And I was like, ooh, yeah. why don't we just change the script so that mm -hmm. we tell girls like, yeah, a certain amount of discomfort can be normal, and it's because this is happening with the, the with the prostaglandins causing the cramping sensations, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. But like, if you reach this level of pain, or if you reach this level of discomfort, that's not acceptable, mm. right? Like, yeah. what if girls were told from the beginning, like, here's the clear line in the sand, yeah, right? Here's true. what's normal, and here's what's not, right? And here's mm. where you deserve help, rather than saying just suck it up and deal with it because it's a woman's lot in life. What if we actually just told them from the beginning, when your body is in this much pain, it's asking you for care. It's right. asking for help. It's communicating something to you. Mm -hmm. How will we respond? And that's the part too that I keep talking about women in my age group. Everyone's beginning charting. Everyone's beginning NFP, even the girls who aren't dating that are in my friend group because they said, it's about time I know what's going on with my body. Yes. Because we want to be able to trust our healthcare uh, doctors and physicians. And granted, they do know a lot more than we do, but sometimes that doesn't get translated in a 20 minute appointment at the doctor's office. So everyone's yeah. beginning to take it on to themselves of, I wanna be able to learn like what is going on with my body. And I think mm -hmm. what you're saying touches on that very, very well because we don't want to mask an issue with the suck it up mentality or even with the extreme of what society is offering of, oh, you have an issue, here's birth control. It's being right. able to know how to advocate for yourself. Yep. You do know your body better than anyone else. Like no one else is living in your body. Um, and it's, yeah, it, it's once you know, then you can act through that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's... Well, and I will say too, just for anybody who's out there that sometimes doctors don't know mm. you know I've I've had clients who are who are nurses and who are doctors and this was like one of my first instances of feeling like oh no what did I do wrong as an NFP instructor I had a client who mm. was a nurse wow. and I was in the first session with her where we were reviewing how the menstrual cycle works and she burst into tears and I was like I'm the worst NFP instructor in the whole world I don't know what I did what did I say wrong and so yeah. I, I paused and I said you know I'm really sorry did I say something to upset you do you need a minute and she was like no 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 it's not you she's like I went through nursing school and never learned any of this. Mm, wow. She's like, I am just so angry and I feel so betrayed by my profession that mm. I have to learn this from you. Like, no offense to you, right? But like, yeah. why didn't I learn this from the people who were teaching me how to be a nurse? That's crazy. Right? Mm -hmm. And so she was just in tears over this. And I've had other people who are doctors who have said very similar things. That like, we spent X amount of time talking about this in med school and then we were done. It was like, 
you know, write the birth control prescription mm -hmm. and move on because yep. it is a complicated aspect of women's biology, right? Once you actually sure. get into cycle charting, you can see, wow, this is, this is really complex. Right. Um, so, so I also want to say that like, if there are doctors who don't seem like they are addressing the issue, mm -hmm. you might have hit a spot where it's just kind of a, a blind spot in their training. And so it is really important to try and find a doctor who is more receptive and, mm -hmm. and is able to, to kind of dig into problems when, when you right. have something to articulate. Well, I guess that's where my question and my wonder is for you of, okay, we know as Catholics it is so important for us to have community because when you mm -hmm. have community, then you know that you can rely on other people. You can have people cheering you on to say, like, keep going. Like, it is going to be worth the journey eventually when we get to heaven. But yeah. where do we find, if so many of us, even myself, like, if, I, if, my, if I'm still struggling to find the community of women who feel comfortable to talk about periods that I know they're yeah. having and I'm having, and then so much more beyond that, to be able to find someone to sit with me or for someone watching in my suffering of my menstrual cycle mm -hmm. and to draw me back into hope or to even find the proper doctors to yeah. walk these journeys with, what advice do you have of that, that starting point, I well, guess? Well, yeah, I mean, we'll let's start with the doctors first because I know there's some, some ready-made resources for that. So my Catholic doctor um, does telehealth, so you can okay. just go on and you can look. And so they have tons of people who are trained in what's called restorative reproductive medicine, mm -hmm. so RRM professionals. Um, and so you can meet with somebody remotely via telehealth who's, who's trained to understand these cycles in this way and to treat them without just the Band-Aid of birth control as the answer to everything, right? right? Um, um, so my Catholic doctor, there's organizations called Facts About Fertility, um, okay. which is educating doctors, and they also have lists of clinicians that you can turn to who have been trained in these areas. Natural mm -hmm. Womanhood is another website that's a great resource. So like, write all those down and go check them yeah. out and find them. Um, in terms of community, you know, I, I have seen that there are like charting circles popping up on college campuses. No way. Um, no way. Leah Becker Jacobson, uh, who wrote Holistic Feminism, she's mm. been starting these these sorts of, of charting circles on college campuses and starting these awesome. conversations. Um, the I've self-published a book called Cycle Charting for Single Women, mm -hmm. and it has discussion questions in it. And so it's actually set up so that like if you wanted to get a small group of friends together right. and to like go through the book, but then also have like discussion questions and reflection, like to do it as a small. as a small group. Like, like, mm -hmm. you can do that. Um, but I think the answer is that women just need to create those spaces. Mm -hmm. And I think That's that true. first step is just what you were talking about, being comfortable, right? Like, comfortable talking about these things and mm -hmm. saying, you know what? We should have a space. Let's do it, right? right? Like, give yourself permission to get that started in your own life. Because I guarantee that if you've had that desire, if the Holy Spirit has put that in your heart, that you can articulate it, yeah. somebody else is waiting for you to just press the start button and go. It's true. And then everyone all of a sudden starts sharing, oh my gosh, I found a great Catholic OBGYN because mine, honestly, this is a real life uh, story. So a couple weeks ago, I was talking to some friends. I'm like, my OBGYN is retiring. I don't know who to go to next. And mm -hmm. then I gave the space because I was comfortable enough bringing that question to the table. And then all of a sudden, I didn't realize all of my friends have these Catholic OBGYNs like, you got to give me their names and their numbers. Right. I didn't even know they were in this area of New England and everything like that. So, yeah. yeah, it's just once one person starts talking about it, it's amazing how the floodgates begin to be opened. Yeah. And we can share experiences and stories with one another, share those contacts with one another. And then, yeah, just affirm that, yes, Jesus is the healer. Mm -hmm. And he can um, bring so much light and goodness back into our life, even into our menstrual cycles. Amen. So, Christina, where can people go um, to just learn more about you, mm -hmm. stay up to date with that book that OSV is going to be publishing, which is so exciting. Congratulations yeah. Thank again. Thank you. I'm really, really excited about no, it. No, yeah. I'm pumped for you. So where, like, where can people go, even if they just want to follow along with your Instagram page and see yeah. your information you're posting? I've tried to make everything as simple as possible. So it's all Pearl and Thistle, just all spelled out. So mm -hmm. pearlandthistle.com, and then my IG handle is pearlandthistle, and same on Facebook. Um, 
So that's where I have all of my resources. And you can also, I have a weekly email newsletter that's all about body literacy resources. So I just drop one little resource into your inbox every week. So you can just awesome. go sign up for that on my website too. Love it. I'm going to say this at the very end, um, just as a good chuckle for everyone. This is where I thought you were going to go with the conversation. Oh, please. I figured I could embarrass myself in front of the whole audience. Okay. So hope has to do with heaven. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, what are four things with heaven? Because mm -hmm. there's four stages of our menstrual cycle. Oh my gosh. So I thought of the four <laughs> last things. I thought somehow you're going to relate menstruation, the follicular phase, ovulation, lute, I and the luteal phase. Yep, with yeah. death, judgment, hell, and heaven. But you didn't. And you did so much. I feel a blog post coming on. Like maybe that should be. <laughs> I maybe for, I the like next, it. for the, another episode, we could find out how that could all relate. <laughs> four menstrual cycle uh, stages with the four last things. <laughs> Great. Sounds good. But everything that you mentioned, I'm just so grateful that I got to receive something here. For everyone who's watching at home and you want to continue the conversation, I'm going to leave all of Christina's information in the description below so you can reach out to her for any resources and then all the resources you mentioned as well. I'll be sure to leave those links. Great. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being here, Christina, and God bless all the good work. Anna, thank you for being here as well and watching Mom film an episode. And for all of you at home, please know of our prayers and God willing, we'll see you again next time. God bless.